Hello students, my name is Neyati Seth and thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the second section of the chapter or uh, of the thyroid gland. Okay, in this section of presentation, we'll be studying about the histology of the thyroid gland. Okay, I have taught you thyroid gland in detail, but here we'll be studying about its internal structure or histology okay the thyroid gland contains numerous follicles okay and it is composed of epithelial follicle cells and colloid a thyroid gland has a thin covering of connective tissue and fibroelastic capsule Internally, it gives rise to many septa called as trabeculi, which divide the gland into many lobules. See, these are the lobules. Okay, these are the lobules, and uh, internally, it gives rise to many septa, which is known as trabeculi. It uh, divides the gland into many lobules. Septa contains nerves, capillaries blood vessels and lymphatics as you can see these are the capillaries and uh, that is present in the septa that divides the gland into many lobules between follicles these are the follicle students okay these are the follicles so between follicles there is a clear fo parafollicular cells that produce calcitonin okay that produces calcitonin and please note that each lobule these are the lobules okay one lobule two lobule three four and five so each lobule they consist of numerous ovoid or spherical thyroid follicles or assigny which are held together by connective tissues okay the total number of thyroid follicles is about three millions but here only five are visible one two three four and five but total number of thyroid follicle is about three millions each follicle is lined by cuboidal epithelium as you can see these uh, this epithelium is known as cuboidal epithelium that rests on the basement membrane see this is the basement basement membrane and these are the cuboidal epithelium that rests on the basement membrane and has a cavity in the center see this is the cavity which is present in the center it is filled with jelly like amber colored colloidal substance called thyroglobulin that means a cavity is filled with a thyroglobulin it is secreted by cuboidal epithelium which are these cells okay the cuboidal epithelium secretes two hormones and they are t3 and t4 t3 we also call it as triiodothyronine and t4 is also known as tetraiodothyronine or thyroxine okay these are synthesized in the thyroglobulin which is present here in the cavity okay some isolated clusters of cells are found in the connective tissue between the follicles and they are called as parafollicular cells or c cells see this is the c cell c cell is also known as parafollicular cells they secrete a hormone called as thyrocalcitonin okay now let's see how me iodine metabolism takes place dietary iodine is absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract of humans and then they are taken up by the thyroid hormone and then it is removed from the body by the kidneys the transport of iodine into the follicular cells of thyroid gland is dependent upon na plus and iodine minus co-transport system let's see how it takes place as i told you that iodine taken up by the thyroid gland is oxidized by peroxide in the lumen of follicle okay so your i minus gets converted into i plus using uh, peroxidase okay 
oxidized iodine which is this can then be used in the production of thyroid hormone so this is how iodine metabolism takes place then the next step comes and in that step production of thyroglobulin takes place pituitary produces tsh okay that is thy thyroid stimulating hormone which binds to the follicle cell receptors follicular cells of the thyroid they produce thyroglobulin which is a very large glycoprotein and it is released into the, the colloid space where it tyrosine residues are iodinated by i plus and the this results in tyrosine residue which have one or two resid, uh, iodines attached so this is the thyroid gland histology these are the follicular cells and this is the parafollicular cell that is your c cell and thyroglobulin is present in the cavity of these cells these are the cuboidal uh, epithelium uh, which uh, produces uh, T3 and T4 okay and these uh, gland is composed of hollow spheres called as colloid follicles these are the colloid follicles which has a uh, cavity in the center okay now thyroid follicle how uh, does it takes place see uh, this is the hypothalamus and this is the pituitary gland this is the anterior gland anterior lobe of the pituitary and this is the posterior lobe of the pituitary this produces uh, uh, releases trh that is uh, uh, thyroid hormone and it acts on the pituitary uh, gland and specifically on the anterior lobe of the pituitary which produces thyroid stimulating hormone that is TSH and that goes and acts on the thyroid gland that release uh, thyroid follicle it releases T3 and T4 which are the hormones of thyroid gland and then homeostasis is restored increased uh, T3 and T4 concentration in blood and uh, normal t3 and t4 concentration is attained and normal body temperature and when the homeostasis is disturbed then decreased uh, t3 and t4 concentration in blood or low body temperature is seen and uh, this is how it uh, goes on and on okay now one major advantage of this system is that uh, the thyroid gland is capable of storing many weeks worth of thyroid hormone okay and if no iodine is available for this period thyroid hormone secretion will be all maintained so this is the major advantage of this system now regulation of thyroid hormone level uh, thyroid hormone synthesis and secretion is regulated by two main mechanisms an autoregulation mechanism and regulation by hypothalamus so these are the two modes uh, by which uh, thyroid hormone is regulated in auto regulation mechanism it reflects the available level of iodine whereas in this mode of uh, mechanism uh, regulation by hypothalamus and anterior lobe of pituitary takes place first we'll be studying about the auto regulation of thyroid hormone production the rate of iodine uptake and incorporation into the thyroglobulin is influenced by normal amount of iodine available low iodine level it increases iodine transport into the follicular cells whereas high iodine level it decreases iodine transport into the follicular cells thus there is a negative feedback regulation of iodine transport by iodide okay now let's see effect of thyroid hormone on the cardiovascular system it increases heart rate it increases force of cardiac contractions it increases stroke volume it increases cardiac output and it increases upregulation of catecholamine receptors so this is the effect of the thyroid hormone on cardiovascular system now let's see its effect on the respiratory system it increases resting respiratory rate 
and it also increases ventilatory response to hypercapnia and hypoxia. Hypoxia is a condition in which low oxygen is there. Okay. Now let's see effect of thyroid hormone on the renal system. It increases blood flow in kidneys and it increases glomerular filtration rate that is GFR in kidneys. Okay. Now effect of thyroid hormone on oxygen carrying capacity. It increases RBC mass and as we know that hemoglobin is present in the RBC. So if hemoglobin is more then oxygen carrying capacity will be more. Okay. And then let's see uh, effects of thyroid hormone on intermediary metabolism. So it increases glucose absorption from gastrointestinal tract of humans. It increases carbohydrate, lipid and protein turnover. And it increases substrate availability. Effect of thyroid hormone in growth and tissue development. Then it increases growth and maturation of bone. It increases tooth development. It increases growth and maturation of epidermis. It increases rate and force of skeletal muscle contraction. And how does it affect on nervous system? It is critical for normal central nervous system development. It enhances wakefulness alertness that how quick witty you are it enhances memory and learning capacity it is required for normal emotional tone and how does it affect on reproductive system it is required for normal follicular development and ovulation in the females how egg is formed it is all dependent on your uh, thyroid hormone and it is required for normal spermatogenesis in male. Spermatogenesis means formation of sperm. Genesis means formation and spermato means sperms. So it is required for the normal spermatogenesis in males. So this was all about the histology of thyroid hormone. In my next section of the presentation, I'll be teaching you about the parathyroid gland. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching Wikipedia Word videos.